back to pecan tan in ginger hi guys for anyone that is new i am mina nice to meet you um i usually have my other half here dylan but today it's just going to be me um this is kind of going to be a sit down video of me kind of just talking about the things that i have learned from being married and kind of the five you know biblical secrets into a successful marriage or you know being a amazing wife now i would say this is just my opinion and i have not been married long so you know take it with a grain of salt but i would love to just start off talking about partnership um Two is always better than one. But if you're not on the same page, then it's kind of like a, a, a class project. Have you ever had like a class project and the team that collaborated always presented better or did better versus the team where someone wanted to be the leader and the other person wanted to be the leader. And when they went to present, it kind of was like their egos fighting against each other and they just didn't present as well it didn't come off um genuine or or didn't flow that's literally being married and having a partnership is like doing a class project for your entire life <laughs> um just to kind of put things in perspective of of how i process it and you know in in church we talked about being unevenly yoked and how detrimental that could be to a partnership uh i think god that me and dylan are evenly yoked and we are super transparent and usually always on the same page and i know that doesn't always happen um and that doesn't always happen with us either but how important it is to be transparent and communicate you know with your partner when it comes to making decisions and just when it when when challenges come because they will come that you stay unified like together second companionship i've learned okay have you guys ever gotten into an argument back in high school middle school whatever it may have you know been with your boyfriend or your girlfriend and then you ran to your parents or your mom or a friend and you told them about the argument that you guys had and ever since you told them they look at that person differently I'll never forget. I was in high school, had my high school boyfriend and we got into an argument and I started to slowly like tell my mom what was going on. And I kind of like confided in her, of course. You guys, she, it was like the, don't do that. <laughs> it ended up backfiring, right? And then she started to look at him in a different light. And she, I would never forget, she was like, wait, after he did all that, you're then gonna like go see him. Like I forbid you from seeing him. And I was like, no, like I should never have told you. That's why you should never truly let anyone in your relationship. Like your spouse somewhat should be kind of considered your best friend. And I'm not talking about someone who's clingy or anything like that. When I mean best friend, I mean that you can feel comfortable confiding in them and you don't have to tell you know your deepest darkest secrets but being able to share and show emotion how important that is and i feel like a lot of people's downfall is when they start to share things that are going on with outsiders and then now you're in this kind of whirlwind of taking on other people's opinion when what you and your spouse have going on should be between you two unless it's something crazy you know dramatic or you feel like you need to bring someone in maybe even a professional do your thing but if you guys are not seeing eye to eye i would say 
keep it in the house, honey. Like show empathy, be considerate and ask yourself if I was in, you know, the shoes of my spouse, you know, how would I want them to react to what I am going through? Because your relationship should be built on trust and respect. And once those two start to get a little shaky, I'm not gonna lie, it takes a lot to rebuild that up. And the Bible even says that, you know, it's not good for a man to be alone, that we should have someone there. It's weird to say, and don't attack me for it, but I kind of feel like women shouldn't be alone either. Like that we all kind of have our, our soulmates and that God meant for us to kind of be one. Yeah. Number three, commitment. <laughs> commitment is so important. Like committing to a long-term relationship, like you need to be loyal and dedicated. If you can't be both of those things, do not enter into a relationship. Bottom line, be transparent with the person or with your spouse or whoever, but if you can't do those two things, it's not going to work. And you both need to be doing those two things, not just one person, it doesn't work that way. And what that really means is navigating through the good times and the bad times. From being with Dylan, obviously six years, I feel like I've been super blessed where we haven't really went through any too, too, too bad times, but there has been, you know, career-wise, money-wise, um, moving. Like, I mean, when I think about our relationship and like where we were a few years ago, we were in New York City. I had the drop, the job that I thought that I wanted, right? Like I was the assistant buyer, you know, for lighting and lamps and I'm working in the city and I thought that's what I wanted for myself. And then COVID hit and it kind of just changed our whole perspective on like what we wanted out of life. And what we wanted out of life was not running up and down the streets of New York City. Nothing's wrong with that, <laughs> but it just wasn't what we wanted. And at that time, it was a big commitment to be like, oh, like I know you're my boyfriend and we're gonna get up and we're gonna move to Florida. That's crazy. But even then, that loyalty and dedication that we had was so freaking strong. And there was something inside of me that was just like, this is gonna be the right move, God got you. If you don't listen to that little voice inside, you're crazy <laughs> in the most respectable way ever. Like we all have that little voice, like, do I see myself marrying him? Do I take that next leap? Do we move? Do we not move? Is this the right decision? And no matter how you try to suppress it, it's still there. Like if you have to question whether or not, you know, if you want to be dedicated or loyal to the person that you're with, you, you probably shouldn't be with them. I feel like after some time of knowing someone and, and really building intimacy with them, that in your heart, you should know if this is someone you see yourself with for the long haul. You're gonna know. And I think it's just also just super important to know what God has joined together. Don't let anyone separate that. Number four, love and affection. A big part about being a wife is showing both of those things. Of course, that needs to be reciprocated. But when I think about showing love and showing affection, it doesn't always have to be physical. That could be... Dylan coming home from golfing or 
doing a, you know, entrepreneur event that he kind of came from or whatever. Maybe he's been on meetings all day and we really haven't had the chance to even, you know, sit down and talk. That's me cooking a nice meal. And it's not because I have to, it's because I want to. That's my love language. And people's love languages are different. And not everything has to be just physical. The physical part really is the best part because you know that you belong to him and he belongs to you. Kissing, hugging, you know, just spending intimate time with each other is just so vital. And going on walks, cooking dinner, making sure he has clean clothes. Now you're probably thinking like, girl, that's given like back in the day when, you know, the wife had to cook, clean, take care of the kids. Y'all, it's the same today. If you don't know how to show love and affection, go back to the basics. Some people don't really know how to show love, you know, and affection, and it could be a little weird, but you don't have to do what your parents did. Like, make it uniquely you. There's, there's no need to, I guess, pass on a tradition that you didn't even like growing up. And once you start to build a emotional connection, it just becomes that like more better. And then don't forget in the Bible, Ephesians says that, you know, he should love you as he loves himself. It is your husband's responsibility to love you and be the man that you feel like you want to cook for. Be the man that you want the house to be clean when he comes home like he also has his you know his own duties you know as a guy um i won't even say as a guy but as a man so choose wisely ladies choose wisely because not every man deserves the laundry the cooking the cleaning and don't come for me guys if you're not showing that ownership then it does not make us want to clean, cook, do laundry. Sorry, it's just not a thing. <laughs> Number five, this one is support and encouragement. Before we moved to Florida, Dylan was a, um, he already was an entrepreneur. He was starting off his business and we made a spiritual shift where we stopped talking negative about ourselves and started to manifest the things that we wanted in life. I never once told Dylan what he couldn't do. Even though we wasn't sure if, you know, him starting, his, you know, his business was the best decision, I never once said, "No. Keep your 9 to 5 cuz it's more stable income. Support your spouse in what they do." Like and vice versa, he supported me in my transition from that nine to five to being in sales. You have to support and encourage. Who are you to rip down someone else's dreams? Let's be real. Now, as a young couple, when you're able to move kind of the way you want, I just think it's just so vital to show someone, especially your spouse, that you can do all things. And I'm here to hold your hand and guide you through the way. And I'm not gonna say that it's gonna be easy because it hasn't been easy for me. Like there's nights where Dylan's on the computer from 11 p.m., 12, one, you know, in the morning. There's also weekends where we don't always get to go out and have fun because he's working. So it's not easy. And there's a lot of sacrifice but when you and your spouse are on the same page on why they're sacrificing, it kind of softens the blow. And also constructive feedback. I had to keep it super transparent and communicate and be like, you fill your cup for 
other people. But when you come back to me, your cup is empty. You give, 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 give. What's left for me to have? Like, I don't want the leftovers. I don't want, you know, the scraps on the plate. When you're transparent about your needs, your desires in a relationship, it's really hard for your spouse to shoo it away. If your spouse kind of shoo shoos it away, then there's a deeper conversation that needs to be had. We went through partnership, companionship, commitment, love and affection, and support and encouragement. Five little takeaways. And I hope that it helps someone, or I hope that you're maybe curled up in bed right now, you know, looking at the video or eating your breakfast or, you know, wherever you're at, that you're, you're kind of nice and cozy. And this was just like a little girl's chat of something that I had on my mind. Thanks for watching. And I hope to see you guys back at my next video. This time, I'm pretty sure Dylan's going to be incorporated, so.